Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, uh, September Raleigh Astronomy Club Imaging Meeting for year 2022. Uh, tonight uh, we're going to go through images of uh, the summer nebulae that uh, our imagers have uh, taken images of. And so, uh, as well has been discussed before we started recording, uh, this is probably the first clear night we've had in a while, so that's probably why we don't have very many people here. So with that said, uh, let's go through this really, really fast and so that we can go back out to the scopes. So <laughs> anyways, who wants to go first? I can kick it off. Uh, kick it off. Stuff open. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I've just got the Astrobin pages up and feel like I've shown several of these recently in other contexts, but um, this, uh, uh, so I started, um, astrophotography really with first telescope it like spring of last year so this was a bit after that with um my first cooled camera the, the obviously the the seahorse nebula and i've i've processed it, processed it quite a few times and this is the latest one coming out of like the the ifn processing technique that i presented on last month and we have the workshop tomorrow or this weekend on sorry sunday um yeah i like this one is like i just i've i like dust and uh this one's got a lot i don't think this image does the target justice i've learned a lot since then and the data acquisition and whatnot but i spent a lot of time on this 36 hours um and most of the data i had like a streak of light that showed up like at the bottom left of the frame which was fun to figure out how to process out but managed to do it um where did that come from i think there was just a very faint smudge on the um filter oh okay it wasn't like a reflection or anything no initially i thought oh that's probably like my neighbor's like floodlight pointed in my backyard or something but um no it i think it was a a smudge and very faint like surprisingly faint and on each sub, individual sub, you could hardly see it. But once you integrated it, you know, PixInsight was like, oh, that's data. <laughs> Let's keep that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and because Meridian Flips, there was another spike. Maybe it was down at the bottom. I don't remember. There was a, a fainter spike on the other side because it was just less data on the after the flip. But, um, so I, I someday I'd like to come back and try this one again. But um, and this one, Lagoon M8, uh, hard for me to shoot at the shoot between my house and my neighbor's house. And I think this was, yeah, an hour and 15 minutes, uh, at which point I was like, that's good enough. Um, I like this one in particular, just I'll zoom in a bit, I guess, here. Uh, I just I, I just like the, you know, it's broadband. I like the the faint the structure on the outside contrasts with the center and um i i think i did a little bit better with the data acquisition for this one but um yeah enjoyed that one and then chris you said nebula but i have triangulum galaxy as well um as nebula in a solid slide sure thanks <laughs> <laughs> um this one I've always liked, but I I took me a while to learn saturation and bringing out color. So if I like pull up an earlier version, like I like this one too, but it's kind of flat. And I figured out, oh, <laughs> there's more stuff I could do to this and ended up with, you know, much more vibrant yeah, colors. Nice. Yeah, and I know I, I think I shared this in the last meeting, but I, I really, really like this one in particular. So when you <laughs> I'm talking about the challenge, maybe using M33, I'm in. Um, well, one thing I would I would say about M33, you know, you, you were talking before the meeting started about getting an SCT. Yeah, uh, this would make a nice in your face uh, image uh, if you just like, you know, zero in on the uh, on the core there and uh, yeah. Because it's so big, it would almost make the image 
well, I hesitate to say Hubble like. <laughs> The the scope I have in the backyard right now, it's a, with this same camera, it would bring it into probably the edge right here. So it clips the fainter bits. Yeah. But I, well, who I, cares about that? It's like, you know, like I said, yeah. I, I'd like to get an in your face shot of that. Yep. It's on my list. I, I don't think it's quite time yet, but uh, I'm going to go for it again. Um, so about a year ago, I got the monochrome uh asi 2600 and this is one of the first targets i went after is the elephant's trunk nebula um i didn't get a whole lot of data i think it was about an hour hour and a half maybe per narrow band um filter and then a, just a little bit like 15 minutes each of color rgb but um i really i like the i like the target one and i like the the way the colors came out though they're you know kind of muted but still can see lots of interesting structures and stuff um, so sometimes it's like what can you do with very little though you might argue you know, almost four hours is not too too little um this dumbbell nebula was my first light with the setup I have in the backyard, though I've I've reconfigured um, the scope so that the camera is pointed down and other things since I did this one, but was out of Big Woods. I got two subs, took no flats. I forgot to collimate. Uh, so this is a single five-minute sub with no calibration frames at all, um, which is just kind of kind of cool. Um, I didn't realize until I processed this how much I actually like the fraction spikes on stars. Like I've seen them in other pictures and been like, okay, they're they're there. But I really I think I like them a lot. And then dumbbell with a different scope. This is with the Esprit. I think it's I haven't published this one yet. I'm not too fond of the, like how bright the core ended up, but um uh, it's kind of weird that you would have to do an HDR or such a thing. Yeah. How much time did I spend on this guy? Almost 11 hours total. The, I, the one thing I want to go back and try with this one is um, I captured sulfur along with, you know, HA and O3. And the sulfur is kind of, kind of like a, almost a cross like where the brighter bits are in the middle yeah. uh, but this is hoo for the narrowband that sulfur wasn't used at all which i'm kind of miffed about i want to use it i want to see if i can pull out a little bit more color somehow i may i may may try and go for a more natural look but yeah that's my list that's it yeah okay i'll go next yeah, thanks for being, or uh, I have a friend named Praveen too, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Pull up my folder here. So, that's that first. Screen share. Okay, you see that? So, um, yep. yeah, so, well, you know, going along with what you were talking about, uh, I'll pick it up where you left off and showing someone else's work. Well, this is my uh, very first uh, narrowband image uh, by M27 dumbbell. And uh, so, as you can see, Devine, my uh, orientation was 90 degrees uh, relative to yours. So, uh, uh, the, uh, the, I did this in Cary. Uh, this is back when we were living in our town home in Cary. And, uh, uh, the nice thing about, uh, the town hall I was in is that we were in units. So I could just set up the telescope right next to the, uh, to the house. I didn't have to like, you know, dodge anything. And, uh, uh, it was a perfect location. And, uh, but one thing that you'll notice about this that, uh, um, uh, 
because I was just learning how to do narrowband at the time. I used a, uh, a cheap, uh, uh, we call it a uh, filter wheel for this. It was just a regular manual filter wheel. But uh, if you look right, uh, like right in here, you'll see that all the stars are mostly red, whereas over here, not so much, right? And so what was happening is, is that uh, the little uh, slit that's on the side that allows you to like move the wheel with the finger. Yeah, and in that slit, uh, light was coming in and yeah, hitting it. And so I just screwed, totally screwed up the oxygen uh, data in this. I tried to, you know, it, it looked a lot worse than this, but, uh, uh, but it's still there if you look for it. As long as somebody points it out, I don't, uh, unless somebody points it out, nobody's going to really tell, but yeah, I was going to say, we only noticed because you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but, but, but the whole point was, is that, yeah, this was my very first narrow band image, and I think this was, oh gosh, uh, 2014, maybe? Well, geez, I mean, I've got the file right here, let's see. Yep, 2014, that's when that one was. So, let's see. Okay, this was more recent. You guys have seen this already. Uh, this is a uh, uh, an SHO sulfur hydrogen oxygen uh, NGC 688, also known as suppressing anyone. This is at 630 uh, millimeters, which, by the way, the uh, dumbbell was done with the same uh, telescope but a different uh, camera. This was done with a CCD camera uh, back when. There weren't much. There wasn't much of a uh, CMOS revolution in, uh, happening at the time. Uh, say uh, eight take four two eight ex and four two eight was a four hundred series. Two eight means it was only two point eight megapixels. So <laughs> not the most resolved thing in the world, but I was happy with it because I had to. I mean, I had no idea if I was going to really like this or not, but. Uh, Anna actually, she has this camera now, and I uh, gave also gave her the uh, first uh, narrowband uh, uh, filters I use, and uh, so she has those. And asked me to try them out, see if you like them. So, but anyway, back to this guy, Crescent Nebula. This was with uh, the NG or NGC, excuse me, uh, ASI ZWO's ASI 183 MM. So, of monochrome camera. CMOS this time, and uh, the thing I like most about the camera is that the uh, pixels are really tiny, but because of that, you can't really exploit the uh, uh, the advantages of the newest CMOS uh, sensors, and when I say newest, as in the ones that have come out like in the past uh, uh, five years or so, um, because the pixel size is being so small, they can only drink up with so many photons at once. So. Uh, but it's a really tiny sensor because the uh, pixels are so tiny and it's uh, 20 megabytes. So it's almost, uh, uh, you know, two times bigger or uh, 10 times bigger than that uh, uh, sensor right there. But anyway, yeah, Crescent Nebula, sulfur hydrogen oxygen narrow band. Then there's this one. This one was taken with the same camera as the dumbbell. It's the elephant uh, trunk. So, Naveen, you pretty much stole my line right here of all the stuff that we've been doing all over. I'm just going to show you the same thing. Now, you'll look at this guy up here. This is known as the uh, Garnet Star. This is in the constellation Cepheus. Uh, I can't remember the exact name to that. I want to say, I want to say it's Oliver Raymond. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it has diffraction spikes there and. Now, like Naveen, he only has four diffraction specs on his stars. The, this, these right here, I have eight, which means this was taken with a uh, with the camera lens, uh, where the uh, what is it? The uh, aperture blades uh, form the, these little tight corners, and uh, yeah, get diffraction specs as a result of it. So, but anyway, Elton Trunk Nebula. Now, one thing about this is that again, it was taken with a 2.8 megapixel camera. Uh, so the sensors, uh, or excuse me, the lens, when we go back up, the lens is 200 millimeters, was taken with a three megapixel, 2.8 megapixel camera. So I actually had to do a, a mosaic of this to get the whole thing to fit in. So that, what are you going to do? Came out really well, I thought. Yeah, and looks great. this beautiful thing <laughs> right here 
This is the uh, M16 Nebula, also known as the Eagle Nebula. You have there in the uh, middle the pillars of creation. Uh, nothing like Hubble's pillars of the creation, but uh, they. Uh, this was taken with a C9 and a quarter, and um, wow, man, that's an old camera. That was a uh, a Rebel uh, XT, which was an eight megapixel uh, DSLR camera. This was taken with a C9 and a quarter, reduced down to uh, f6.3 with the uh, 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 run of the mill uh, 0.63 focal reducer. That's less strong on me than. Some other generic brands make, uh, but at the time I was enamored by. It. I was like, "Wow, look what I did! Oh, this is great." <laughs> Nowadays, oh gosh, I need to revisit this. But I don't. I actually don't have that telescope anymore. I told the meeting that before the meeting. So anyway, uh, this is the same setup right here for Trifid. This one wasn't as bad, I guess, because in this picture you have a uh, kind of a open cluster of stars in front of the nebula, which gives you these really thick, loaded stars that are characteristic of taken with the schmidt cassegrain uh, But yeah, same schmidt cassegrain uh, for this image, C9 and a quarter. And uh, yeah, triplet nebula, also known as Missy Alpha 20. Uh, let's see, where are these taken? Uh, these were taken in 2010. Actually, I think I took these on the same night. Wow. Way back I really did not sit on objects as long as I should have. Uh, here's something kind of cool right here. You see this right here? Uh, that was an asteroid moving through there. Uh, Mark Mark Lane, who's all into like asteroids and tracking moving objects throughout the solar system, he told me what it was. Uh, he had to like go through. Uh, it's not a well-known asteroid. It was like some long, you know, well. Uh, number designation and, uh, but yeah it was moving through the field as i was taking exposures of these uh, of the uh nebula and yeah we're back to uh was that m27 this was like one of my very first images i ever took this is a single 30 uh second uh image with that older uh dslr the 350 uh d uh rebel xt eight megapixels so um, yeah, as you can imagine, I was squealing with glee. I was like, yay, astrophotography, finally. This was taken with a scope. Uh, uh, it's not very well known. It's a, it, was a, uh, it was a design made, of, oh, I wouldn't say made, and there may have been other ones out there, but uh, it was uh, sold by me. It was called the Schmidt Newtonian. And it's exactly what you think it is, like the Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, it's a Cassegrain uh, design with a what's termed a Schmidt corrector plate in front uh, to uh, uh, correct for, I guess, correct for color or whatever. But uh, I think that was the whole intent here is that the uh, 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 it was a Newtonian, but instead of a spider vein uh, secondary, it had a secondary mounted onto a Schmidt corrector plate. So, anyway, yeah, so just pretend like you have uh, just envision a uh, a uh, Newtonian telescope with a uh, 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 the Schmidt corrector plate on the front of it. And that's what you got here. And I never, I mean, I never got a regular Newtonian, so I have no idea how much it did reduce color. But everybody says it did. So, but when you look right here, you can still see it. Uh, you know, reading out the out the sides here. So, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's one of my first images with the VSLR. And that was with uh, uh, a C11 that Steve Izzo let me borrow in 57. And uh, that was with, uh, that's actually what I, I used to mount that I gave you, um, Steve, it was the uh, that uh, regular Orion Atlas uh, mount. And uh, that was with a C11 right there. Uh, I guess that neighboring galaxy, I say neighboring, it's not very far away. It's, that's probably it right there. I'm not sure. I don't see it, but there's a nice little spiral close by to going uh, Nebula. This is really cool. I, I highly recommend people going after this one. Although, again, it's a planetary nebula, so it's small. Uh, this one's uh, NGC 1514. It's in uh, Perseus, and it's it's quite a bit bigger than uh, the Ring Nebula. So. 
I'll look at Naveen right now. Hopefully he's writing this down and he's going to go after it. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, but yeah, this is something I wouldn't mind going back to. I mean, I need more, way more Pokemon than I have right now. That's Pokemon that I have 630. And this was with uh, um, about a 1500 millimeter Pokemon. This was uh, going back to the C9 and a quarter, reduced down to uh, S6.3, which came out to be about 1500 millimeters. But, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice plant, Terry. I like it a lot. That might be a little bit uh, beyond what I can do. Then that's pretty small. Well, well, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I'll, I already wrote it down. I'm gonna look. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's. I love the way it's all. Goes. It's all relative. Well, you have a six inch, so it's kind of all relative. You know, if you have tinier pixels um, than what I had here, uh, maybe it would be doable. You know, with uh, yeah. six inch. Stay tuned. The, the, yeah, the resolving powers, you know, another issue, but you know, whatever. And yeah, going along with other planetaries, this is uh um uh, oh gosh, the Helix Nebula, NGC7293, yeah, NGC7293. Um God, which constellation is this in? I want to say it's pupus, but I'm, I think I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, you don't get a very uh uh if you were to go after this at uh, our latitude here in North Carolina, you won't get much time on it. It doesn't get that high at all. I think it's like 30, maybe, yeah, 30 degrees max is as high as it gets. It doesn't really get that high at all. Um, I, mean, I, I don't know. It, it's it's really low. 33.6. 33.6? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's a cool nebula, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you got a limited time to go after it uh, if you want to take a look at it, but it's really big. So it's totally reachable with anything, I would say, like 500 or or bigger. Man, I mean, hell, you can probably see it really well. Like, uh, I don't know, I guess if I were to make up some numbers here, the ring nebula right here, this is probably what uh, the Helix Nebula would look like with like a, maybe a 200 millimeter camera lens. Um, I don't know the exact measurement, but I think this uh, nebula right here is like maybe two thirds the same uh, apparent size as uh, the full moon, maybe. I think. I don't know. It's a really, it's a big planetary. It's the largest planetary in the night sky. So, uh, anyway, and of course, here we have uh, the uh, North American Nebula and the uh, uh, Pelican Nebula, and this thing right here, I keep saying this, I call this the Deadpool Nebula. It looks like Deadpool's uh, uh, mask right there. Thought about just going in and taking an image of that and then just like, you know, put it in for takes. But this was uh, taken with uh, that same uh, setup that I did, uh, the, uh, what is it, the Elephant Trunk Nebula right here. And if you look closely, uh, you can tell that I had to do this in two panes as well. Like you can see right here on the edge that uh, this is a, a mosaic as well. Um, one thing that concerned me when I took this picture is that it, how smoky it was right here. And I was like, my God, you know, somehow some stray light got in there. But I took a, a last time I revisited this, this is actually some sort of, I don't know, some uh, intermediate uh, dust that's between the nebula and uh, the telescope. So, I mean, as in uh, dust in the Milky Way. So it's real. It's uh, not not like a gradient or anything, but uh, let's see. Oh, well, that's it. So that's everything I have. So. Anyways, uh, we'd like to go next. I'll go next if you want, Chris. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, 8 o'clock. Sorry to talk so much. <laughs> is that coming through yeah it looks beautiful all right uh okay so we've seen this again several times tonight various things this was way back five years ago now uh i was using the uh one shot color asi 71 uh, with my stellar view uh some of this stuff i don't really use anymore I still have the stellar view and the, and the uh, producer and all of that, but I've gone to narrow band pretty much. Uh, so this was, uh, let's see, 
35 60 second exposures. Uh, I think this was my, yeah, this is my driveway here in Durham uh, back then. Uh, and I would probably process it differently now than I did five years ago. I should reprocess all this stuff that I'm doing tonight, but I haven't done that yet. Am I calculating this correctly? This is probably a like around between 300 and 400 uh, millimeter focal length. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that looks it's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. The next one is okay. This this one is uh, obviously the Dale Nebula in HOO, uh, a little bit uh, overly saturated. Uh, I have to reprocess all this too, I think. Uh, with Now with the 2600 mm that I'm using most of the time now and, and better filters and all of that. Still with the Celebu 70 millimeter, the same mount and all of that. Uh, it's a 90 minutes of HA and 40 minutes of O3 uh, processed in various ways. Uh, I think I'm going to go through. There's, that, there's funny business with the blue in the background that I have to play with. Uh, and, and the red is there's too much red and that sort of thing, but um, it's it's fun to do. And I was really trying to get get these these areas here of the uh, uh, sort of stringy areas of this that you see. Usually you see this part and this part, but you don't necessarily see this uh, this area here. I think it's Pinkering's triangle or something like that. Uh, so I I'm going to go back and reprocess this data at some point and see what I can get out of it. Then here's my elephant trunk, again with the 2600 mm and the three nanometer filters. Uh, also probably oversaturated, uh, but uh, I'll play with that some more too. I'm, this is, I don't know when this was, this is probably two years ago now, at least. So I've learned a little more about processing since then, so maybe I redo this data too. Uh, and then of course there was a time when I was doing all these big mosaics so here's the North American and Pelican going all the way down to the Crescent uh, and through the Seda region and all of that. With uh, This is back with the ATIC now, 460 edge before I got the 2600 mm. Uh, and the Astrodon 5 nanometer uh, ATIC filters. And uh, the Rokinon 135 lens, which I like quite a lot for doing this kind of thing. Uh, and this is three of these things. It's probably two hours for each panel, something like that. Uh, and it, it, it processed and put together. And the, on, the, on the way to doing this one I've shown before, which is the uh, 120 hours of uh, 86 panels going all the way from the veil all the way over to Cassiopeia and beyond. And just to get some idea of the relative sizes of all these things. And these kind of, it, this can be zoomed in quite a lot because every one of the panels in here is similar to the ones in the previous photograph. So this bit right here in here was those three panels from the previous one. And so this was a multi-month project that I did just to see what I could come up with. And that's a lot of, it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, again, with the, back then with the AT camera and the, and the uh, Astrodon 5 nanometer filters. I'd like to go back and review something like this with the new camera and new filters, but I haven't had time to do that. Why did you go to Chroma anyway? Why did I what? Go to the Chroma uh, filters. Uh, availability partly. Okay. Uh, they were getting good, re really good reviews relative to the Astrodons. Uh, they were roughly the same price, uh, but uh, I could get them and I couldn't get the astronauts at the time. I still had to wait months to get them. Yeah, so I, that's, yeah. the reason why I asked that is because uh, I didn't know what your take was on it, and it sounds exactly the same thing. Is I got the, uh, the uh, oxygen uh, three nanometers, and then I went ahead and got the, uh, uh, also the uh, sulfur five nanometers from Chroma. And, uh, I wanted the Astrodome ones, but it's like you're saying, they just weren't available. And then I started reading about, uh, or I didn't even have to read about Chroma because uh, over at my work where uh, we do uh, imaging of uh, fluorophores and, uh, and zebrafish larvae, uh, 
yeah, Chrome are the filter are, are the ones that make the filters for Carl Zeiss uh, yeah. uh, microscopes, and they swear by them. And so, I like well from personal experience, it looks like it's a winner. So yeah, I bit the bullet and got the uh, the oxygen. And then I got twenty six hundred mm needs thirty three uh, millimeter filters, and it's going to be you won't use inch and a quarter. It's too small. So the Chroma 36, we're getting good reviews from everything I read. So I bought the, the hydrogen and the oxygen and the sulfur three nanometer filters. And I've been happy with them so far. I'm very happy with the 2600 mm camera. Uh, okay, so that's that. And then this is another five panel mosaic in for HA from NGC 6604 to the Lagoon back in June of 2020, so two years ago now. And basically, I was just experimenting to see what I could do. Again, this is with the A tick. I like, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back and reshoot a lot of this stuff with a better camera and uh, get more resolution. And I know more about processing now than I did two years ago. So this is a fun thing to do in the summer uh, if, you, if you want to take the time to do that. Uh, it's a lot of fun to figure out how to piece the, the mosaic together. And there are a variety of ways to do that. And, uh, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So, Steve, what, what software do you use for mosaics? Because uh, I've most had issues. Of time, most of the time I use ICE. The Is that the Microsoft? Yeah. Okay. I have, I have had good luck with that. I've tried other things that don't work as well. I hate to say okay. that because I hate Microsoft products, but that one actually works. Uh, okay. So most of these things I put together with that. Uh, on occasion, it doesn't work very well, and then I use Photoshop or something else to try to put put other things together. Uh, but uh, does Photoshop have like a an automated alignment process, or yeah. do you have to do that by eye? Okay, uh, it has an automatic uh, way of doing that. Okay, align it and then and then combine them. And sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. I was doing a, a a panorama the other day of some artwork that I did in a museum where I'd taken multiple pictures on a wall. And when I put them together in, in Photoshop using that mechanism, the, 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 the frames of the, of the things didn't align properly. And uh, they looked kind of jagged. But when I took it into ice and did it there, I did it perfectly. Hmm. Couldn't okay. tell that it was two, two together. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I'm, there may be other even better ways to do it, but that seems to work for me. So thanks. That's what I've got, Chris. Okay, very good. All right, anybody else? I have one, so it won't take much time. Well, that's fine. Are they the ones on your back wall there? No, no. <laughs> they're not. Those are old back there. They look nice. I mean, you know, considering uh, that's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Wow. This is, um, I just got a new camera. I got a ASI 2600MC. And this was the first image I shot with it the first night out. I did this on the 27th of last month. And it was, uh, it was 26 uh, five minute exposures, five minute subs. And uh, with a Mead 14 inch ACF at F6.7. So. Wow. Should have, should have gone longer on it, but you know I waited a little late to uh, to get started on this object. It's getting pretty far west. And is this on crop? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the wow. Those optics are great. Yeah, yeah. I uh, like Naveen said. I, I miss the uh, the spikes. I used a twelve and a half inch uh, f4 newtonian for 40 years so i had lots of spikes on most stars but i the mead uh, 14 inch i got three years ago and uh and it gives a good image both both deep sky and planetary but uh no spikes but, uh, um, but it, it, I, I got it used and it's probably oh god it's probably 10 or 12 years old i guess uh, and did work in the Yeah, and it's uh, uh, Johnny, you're happy with that camera? Yeah, very much so. It's uh, <clears throat> I can tell it's 16 bit. Um, after uh, I bought a 
ASI 071 right when they first came out and uh, used it for a lot of years, mainly with my Rasa. And, uh, and it's 14 bits. So I, I could tell when I was processing them that this was a, this has a, a, a lot going for it. So I'm liking it so far. Uh, I, uh, I, I considered getting the, the mono camera, but I, uh, uh, I don't know, I've gone one shot color for a, a, a lot of, a lot of years. I've got a, a, uh, 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 S big 8300 mono camera and then the fill the LRGB filters, uh, that I wow. use, but, uh, most of the recent ones I've gotten were, uh, one shot color. I, I think this was my sixth or seventh ZWO camera that I have. So I, I uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I've been, I've been thinking about replacing the, the 71 with that camera that you're uh -huh. just a match with the 2600 mm that I have. Yeah. I yeah. The B, what, what do you do? Once, do you do one shot color at all? And yeah, what, I do, what do you I use? Do mainly, I do mainly one shot color. Yeah. Yeah. No, the being what? What uh, do you? I um, I have the uh, five thirty three, MC. Oh. So I do have that one. Um, I mean it's a it's a good camera, but um, it's a really small sensor. So yeah. I'm already trying to plan out how I'm going to get the twenty six hundred mm on the scope I'm using now, but. Uh, I really like the camera. Well, Johnny, I, mean, this... I, mean, uh, I don't suppose there's any way that I can commit you to uh, post this on to uh, groups I O. I mean, I think everybody would love to see this. This is, yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah, I just, uh, as I said, I shot at the end of near the end of last month, and I've just I've been uh, fooling with it since uh, since then, really. And, uh, this is yeah. it's... I mean, I think that's the best uh, trick that I've seen come out of the club, actually. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, if that offends you. Yeah. No, no offense. That's it's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, I'd like to. Uh, I'm using the camera again tonight. Uh, got yeah, you've got a lot of detail around that whole thing that I don't see in any of the pictures I've got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a pretty nice shot of it with a 12 and a half Newtonian, uh, you know, six or eight years ago. But, uh, but this was a little better. This is longer and uh, they're just cleaner all around. Uh, the camera works well with the eight inch Rasa I have, and it's the same, uh, <clears throat> you know, setback distance for the sensor that the 071 had. So, and you're not putting any filters in front of the camera? No, there's no filter in this one. Uh, uh, I've got a new filter for the Rasa. Uh, they, they've they've come out with a narrow band, uh, kind of like an L Extreme filter for the Rasa that screws in where the optical window is. And I got one of those, and uh, and it works really well. Uh, I shot some stuff in moonlight with it uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it works really well, and uh, but it's. Uh, you have to make uh, like two or three minute subs with the Rasa, with the Rasa when I'm using it, but uh, I'm excited about trying it some more. But this is no filter on this one. That's high. Uh, I don't know if they actually did the cameras more. Uh, yeah. More credit. I, I thought like uh, IR with my like, is it very sensitive in IR or how sensitive is it in IR? You know, I know. Yeah. Um, usually, I don't know. Usually, I use a, video, but IR is what people worry about. Yeah. I used a, a, an IR block, two inch, a 48 millimeter IR blocking filter with this. I don't, oh, know, yeah. if I, I don't know if I needed it or not, Chris, I, but there was one in the imaging train there. Uh, okay. That's all I've got. No, blew me away. It's wonderful. Okay, anybody else? Luke, Tom? Yeah, I'll, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll share mine here. Uh, okay, let's see what you got. Uh, I did the bubble number yellow. Um, awesome. Last week, last week of August. Um, this is a, a DSLR and a C8 for 21 hours. Um, wow, 21 hours, jeez. I, I kept waiting for the more of the background nebula to to be visible, and uh, I, I assume it's from the the IR cut filter in my DSLR since it's unmodified. Um, so as soon as I finished this, I ordered a 2600 mm, and uh, <laughs> it, uh, like, it this ain't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it's certain it's sitting in a box in Alaska right now. So I, I thought it was going to be here. Alaska, oh my God. Uh, yeah, it shipped all the way from China. So I'm, I'm patiently waiting and there's these clear skies tonight. <laughs> but, um, uh, um, but uh, I started this in uh, early June. So it's been, uh, I guess, I don't want to say it's good that it's been cloudy, but it's been a lot of reading. Uh, figuring it all out over the summer. Um, so you say you, you did this with a C8. I mean, was that a C8 with a reducer, or is this just you know straight C8? Yeah, it, it was the six three reducer. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, just really uh, my first big test image to play with Pix Insight and um, figuring out where I go next. Yeah, I understand. Spend more money. <laughs> well, I mean, it's better than my first uh, SCT images. So, yeah, my first SCT images were with a uh, DSLR. Yeah, this, oh, no, that's, that's great. Yeah, yeah it's cool. nice. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. So, that's everything else I took this summer was Galaxy. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you're allowed one. Show us one Galaxy. How's that? Well, all right, let me see what we got here. Uh, here we got fireworks. Uh, I thought you'd say that. That's pretty close by, isn't it? Yeah, this would be a. I got uh, this is my first test image with uh, I got an Ioptron Sem seventy. Um, so this is only I don't know three hours, four hours, um, and uh, I've reprocessed it a, a few times. Are you sharing it right now? No, uh, we still see the bubble right now. Oh uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, a zoom. I don't use zoom very well. Let me. Probably uh, shared the specific window or something. Yeah, let me see where we're. Uh, you see it now? No, nope, that's still. <laughs> we see your whole window, so if you pull up the other one. Yeah, I'll get it. Let's see the browser now. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. So that was like four hours. Um, so I'd, I'd like to hit it all these again once I uh, get the, the different camera and um, certainly try to put some H alpha on the bubble. Um, I also got a new refractor, um, a little shorter at 750. Um, I kind of asked, though, what's that in the lower left? Lower left, this. Yeah, a lot of it's cropped off. It's in a lot of the subs, um, both before and after um, the Meridian flip. Um, and I, I could never quite identify what the streaks were from. They're not in any star atlas. Um, and I haven't taken another picture again to see if it's something in my image train. Um, I don't know that I haven't uncropped uh, Version. I might have a single sub. Um, it's a CR3, um, so I don't know that I can look at it. Um, yeah, I don't know what that was. Um, I, I looked at it closely. It's in some subs, not others. It's a mystery. Very good. UFO. Okay. It's a key also here. Zoom out again. Ah, oh, sorry. Close it. <laughs> Zoom out on the fireworks. Yeah, the fireworks. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking there at the upper left corner. It looks like there's a small galaxy right there. 
Maybe. right up in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I've never noticed that one. I've seen so many images of the fireworks galaxy. I always see something new. Yeah. A little something there. There's another tiny one right there. Yeah, that's a, I did. Uh, I also did. I, don't, I forget what it's called. Um, I'll just bring it up. It's it's near uh, Stevens Quintet. Um, oh, uh, oh, seven three three one. Yeah, that's something I need to go after. Uh, uh, it's going to be sort of a Christmas gift for my dad uh, because uh, that's like the prettiest uh, galaxy, or that's the biggest galaxy next to uh, Stevens Quintet. And uh, here, I mean, just hear me out there. The reason why I want to do that is because. Uh, one, well, my focal length is so short, so I'm going to have, uh, if I want to take advantage of Stevens Quintet, I might as well throw this thing in there as well. Yeah. But Stevens Quintet, uh, my dad's favorite Christmas movie is uh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And Stevens Quintet is uh, used in the very, uh, in the intro of the movie. Uh, it's like the galaxies are talking to each other, <laughs> uh, trying to send down a guardian angel to the main character. But anyway, yeah, it's an old, it's a really old black and white image of uh, Stevens Quintet is what it is in the movie. So yeah, so it, um, this is cropped, but I, I had the quintet up in the corner, but with the C8 uh, and the reducer, it's just warped and um, blurry and didn't seem worth saving. So this is also overblown. Um, I printed it and I think I saved the print version um, for my photo printer since I really have to boost saturation um to I've, I've never matched my screen to my printer well, so well i'm looking at it if you want me to critique something it looks like you may have clipped it just a tad i, I probably it's just like really black yeah i may have um i think i this one is straight out of astro uh, pixel processor i didn't bring it into pix insight um so using the sliders in uh, Astro Pixel Processor, I may have just destroyed it. Um, uh, I started using, so you can always go back. Yeah, I, I've started using PixInsight for the first time for the bubble. So uh, yeah, that's it. All right, very good. Well, I don't have Colin, you're the only one left. Uh, did you want to show anything? No, I have nothing. Uh, this is a bad summer for me, it seemed like uh, on the few occasions when it was good, I had something else going on, so I haven't really of got course. it much. Ain't that always the way. Okay, uh, all right, so I guess we can wrap this up really quick. Uh, um, let's see, okay, so yeah, two things. One, you've already heard about it. Uh, 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 Naveen's going to put on his uh, his uh, workshop for the uh, in integrated flux nebula processing. Um, and uh, so that you, if you have any images that you happen to have taken in areas where IFN uh, uh, is uh, prominent, uh, this will be something worthwhile to look out uh, to uh, uh, attend. Uh, and even so, I mean, yeah, like uh, with it being said, it's like dust looks incredible. I mean, when you have starlight illuminating it just perfectly or silhouetting it, let's put it that way. Uh, but then you might, okay, so that's uh, um, Sunday. Uh, Crap, Levine. Is it two o'clock? Is that what it is? I think so. I'll okay. check real quick. Yep, 2 p.m. Sunday the 18th. Okay, very good. Um, then also one more thing in about, uh, uh, let's see, one, two, about three weeks. Uh, so, or uh, uh, the deadline's in about three weeks. Uh, so uh, Bernie Cole Theater, which is a small, uh, uh, theater in uh, uh, in downtown Raleigh is going to be putting on a performance uh, about uh, Henrietta Lieva. Uh, uh, <laughs> There's so many names here. I'm trying. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, and, well, how about you, Steve? Do you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> Mr. Astrophysicist? Yes. yes. Uh, Henrietta Lieva. Is that how you say her name? I think it's just Levitt. Levitt. Okay. All right. So yeah, Henrietta Levitt. So uh, she was the individual who uh, did the first, uh, uh, I wouldn't call them breakthroughs, but uh, or not, I'm not trying to degrade anybody's uh, uh, work or whatever, but uh, 
she did the first major work on Scipio variables, which uh, in the end uh, is what allowed the uh, Hubble to, well, basically grow the universe from being just a Milky Way to, you know, well, the universe as we know it, as like now the growing universe. Uh, but, but anyway, so they're doing a uh, play on her uh, life and uh, the Bernie Cole Theater came to the club and uh, they were wanting some image uh, material to use in, uh, uh, not in their actual play, but uh, um, with their publicity materials. And so one of the things that they did is they approached us and they said that uh, they wanted to put out a uh, an opportunity for all the amateurs to submit one image to the uh, to the theater. And what they'll do is they'll select, oh, when I say one image, one image per member. And each member's uh, uh, image uh, will be submitted to the theater, and the theater will cho choose among those images uh, to uh, use one for their uh, for their uh, publicity materials. Uh, but you know, I mean, even if yours doesn't get chosen, uh, they say they will use others for uh, uh, for their opening night that they're going to be having, and they'll like project a screen of all the. Uh, other images that uh, the Raleigh Astronomy Club imagers have uh, taken and submitted to them. So here, let me hold on one second. Is there? Is there? Uh, let's see. Chris, there's a very a recent book on her work called Miss Levitt's Stars Miss Levitt's by Stars. George Johnson. I've read it. It's very good. Very interesting. It's like I can't find where's chat on here. <laughs> where's the chat window? Oh, well, there it is. I just like expanded the window. Anyway, okay, here we go. So, uh, so there's uh, the link. I just uh, send it in the chat, and you can uh, fill out that uh, form and submit your image uh, through there. And uh, the deadline is, uh, let's see, I think it's October 9th, 11:59 p.m. So uh, before midnight on October 9th. So that's a Sunday, right there. Uh, anyway, yeah, you're only allowed to submit one image, and what they'll do at the end uh, on October 9th, they'll uh, choose one, and I guess they'll throw it up on their uh, on their posters and whatnot. So uh, just to give you an idea, it's like uh, uh, anything, obviously anything that you can think of that's like tangible to the uh, um, Andrietta's uh, work uh, is probably the kind of image you would want to use. Uh, the things that spring to mind for me are um, or uh, Andromeda, and then uh, what is it? Uh, just the Milky Way, you know, just to you know, show the grandness of the universe. Uh, because uh, it was because of her work, uh, how uh, we were, well, just like anything in science, we were able to take the next step, and that's what Hubble did. So. Okay, so yeah, there's that, the workshop, there's this, and uh, that's it. Uh, I guess we'll end it right here. Anybody have anything else to add? No. Okay, so I guess we'll see you in October. Let me pull up the calendar. That will be, uh, let's see, there's Friday, 7 14. So October uh, 20th is when our next meeting will be, and it will be on the, uh, the imaging challenge of taking an image of the Milky Way. So for those who are here, uh, the only parameters for that was is that it's got to be a picture of the Milky Way. And uh, because of that, it has to be uh, at least 20 degrees. Um, have, uh, have one dimension of your image be at least 20 degrees. So there you go. That's what the imaging challenge was. Uh, all right. Well, let's get out to the telescopes, guys. And uh, good night. All right. Good night. Cheers. Good night.